Hey guys, my name is Juan. I am just one reader. I live in Mexico City and today I am celebrating Stephen Sondheim's 91st birthday. I am incredibly excited to be celebrating this today. It's like some kind of weird personal holiday for me um, because there's very few people out there in the world, especially in music and art and theater, that means so much to me. The way that Stephen Sondheim has provided his legacy and his music and lyrics uh, and, and how I feel like he has lent those to me in my life is something that I can, um, I can appreciate with only a handful of creative people. I mean, people who really change you, you know what I mean? So in this video, I just wanted to take a few minutes to celebrate Stephen Sondheim's legacy and how it has impacted my life and how it has changed me and just share some of the funny, weird, kooky, strange stories that I uh, can can share with you about uh, my encounters with Stephen Sondheim's work. Um, I, I think the first time that I ever encountered Stephen Sondheim without really knowing it was with the Sweeney Todd movie, um, which is a very strange movie. I think it's a very successful adaptation, but in my opinion, if you compare this uh, adaptation to the original source material, um, it just fail. It just sort of fades in comparison, and and um, it pales in comparison. That's what I wanted to say. It pales in comparison to the original, just because the original is so complex and beautiful and eerie and and masterful. And once you get to know how this work was created, you you cannot help but feel like you're in awe of something wonderful. Um, but I think that was my first experience of Sondheim. Um, I, I, I distinctly remember watching that movie, Sweeney Todd, with um, Johnny Depp. And even though now I can see that it's maybe not my favorite form of Sweeney Todd, I, I still remember feeling so shocked by everything that was musically and lyrically happening. Then um, I an, another um, story that I can share with you about my encounters with Stephen Sondheim, I guess... Um, I saw, well, I, I've always been in love with West Side Story and Gypsy. I think Gypsy in particular is, um, a, a piece of theater that is absolutely perfect. Well, many people say that, many people agree that Gypsy is pretty much one of the best written musicals, but there's just something about his lyrics, uh, Sondheim's lyrics, uh, in, throughout the entire piece that I feel is just like one of those moments of connection with the material. I, I really remember feeling when I was watching and listening to Gypsy for the first times in my life that I was really connecting with a genius and with someone who really knew what was going on in people's minds. Um, another encounter that I had with Sondheim, as I already mentioned, uh, West Side Story. I've always been a, a fan of West Side Story because of the music by Bernstein, um, but also the lyrics. I mean, I, I think my favorite songs from West Side Story are actually very Sondheim in their nature, and those are um, Something's Coming, which, you know, in this book, um, on Sondheim by Ethan Morton, and also this one, which I just finished reading, Stephen Sondheim Alive. By the way, you can check out my review on my channel. I posted it earlier today as part of my Stephen Sondheim birthday celebration. Um, in both of these videos, you can really see how West Side Story's lyrics, but especially some uh, songs, were really, really like Sondheim gems already there. And for me, those are uh, Something's Coming, could be, who knows, there's something to any day out, you know? And also, G Officer Kropke, I fucking love that song. That's probably the most joyous moment of West Side Story for me. Um, then, of course, I started really getting more into Sondheim uh, recently as I've been maturing as a psychotherapist and as a psychoanalyst. Um, part of my line of research has been uh, finding those connections and those sort of um, connectivity points between art and psychoanalysis, the, the artistic experience, the cultural experience, 
and the psychoanalytical encounter and the way of psychoanalytically looking at the world and at the mind. So Stephen Sondheim is right there for me in that sort of intersection because Stephen Sondheim is a, a genius. I really, really uh, will always sustain that he is the most important musical composer alive and he's a genius in, in, in what I, the way that I consider uh, a genius, uh, geniality. Um, so for me, exploring Stephen Sondheim's musicals, even though I am not an expert on Sondheim and I would never claim to know as much about Sondheim as the actual Sondheim experts do know about him, um, there are many shows that I haven't seen of his or even listened to, um, but the, the ones that really resonate with me are Sweeney Todd, I think, is his masterpiece. I think it's just something else entirely. It's completely otherworldly for me. Um, but also uh, Follies, I think, is uh, just wonderful. I mean, all of the songs from Follies, but, you know, it has three numbers. I'm still here. Losing my mind, it's like I'm losing my mind. And um, what's the other one? Broadway, baby. Just, you, you know, those songs that when you listen to them, even for the first time, you, f you get this like weird feeling that those songs have been there forever. It's like unearthing like some kind of... Um, archaeological finding. It's always been there and yet you are discovering it. I think that sums up my experience overall with Sondheim. It's finding something that always was there but you just hadn't looked at it or you hadn't listened to it. Another way of summing up the way that I feel about Sondheim's work is that it, it provides order and chaos at the same time but there's always that kind of weird balance sometimes really works musically with dissonance and I think that's a great example for example in Sweeney Todd or in Sunday in the Park with George my other favorite those are very like dissonant but also orderly <laughs> structured beautiful um moments of music that come uh, from chaos and sometimes involve chaos or encompass chaos itself um, so my favorites are Sweeney Todd, Follies, um, Sunday in the Park with George is one of the highlights of my life in terms of artistic experiences. Um, also Into the Woods, which is probably the one that I have seen the most. Um, you know, it's on YouTube and you, you, can, you can watch it and listen to it endlessly and it always gets more meaningful with every uh, rewatch. Um, I think those are my favorites and my most in, the most important experiences that I've had with Sondheim. Um, now, in terms of live theater experiences, I have only seen, I think, one show by Sondheim. I'm trying to remember. Maybe there's more that I've seen and I just can't remember. But the best and most important live theater experience of my life was in New York a couple of years ago, the last revival of uh, Sweeney Todd that they did at the, I forgot the name of the, of the theater, but it was a downtown theater in New York. Um, and it's it was a very immersive experience because, you know, we were seated at these like tables, like communal tables. It was like, a, like an actual um, atmospheric, all involving kind of enveloping situation. You were right there with the actors playing around you, no microphones, only three instruments playing the music, and it was chilling, beautiful. It was a climactic experience. I've never felt so shocked and, and shattered and shaken and, and in awe of something. I went there with one of my best friends, and I was a little bit tipsy because we had had drinks before the show, and that was just a great idea because I was... My defenses were down, my ego defenses were down, and so my unconscious was just like receiving the wave of Stephen Sondheim-ness um, just completely. And I was like, this was my face the entire show. It was just pure, beautiful shock and horror and, and, and 
and wonder. It's wonder. That's what wonder is. And at one point, of course, when Sweeney sings the epiphany, which is the highlight of the show, um, he starts moving around uh, on this little theater and he starts jumping from table to table and he simulates attacking the customers, which is the audience. And I was chosen as one of the um, one of the people whose throats were slit. So I can actually say that Sweeney Todd slit my throat. Um, and I was just like, that's the best experience of live theater that I've ever had in my life. Um, so yeah, those are some of the experiences that I've had. Now, there's another exper experience of Sondheim that I was going to have uh, last March. Um, I was going to see the new revival of Company in New York with Patti LuPone, a new Argentina. You know, Patti LuPone, my goddess. And um, and Stephen Sondheim's music and lyrics, so Company, the, the revival. But of course, COVID happened and everything was canceled. Um, I'm still planning to go there as soon as things get back up and running. I hope I can go there. I was actually going to see Company with um, Kyle Marshall. Kyle Marshall is the host and creator of, in my opinion, the best Stephen Sondheim uh, medium out there, which is a podcast. You can find it on Spotify and uh, I think also on just where you get podcasts from. I don't know. The name of the podcast is Putting It Together and there are many episodes out there. I was uh, a participant in one of those interviews and I was talking with Kyle about Stephen Sondheim and, you know, that's another gift that Sondheim has given me in throughout my life, which is connecting to other people in this kind of very personal, intimate way, you know, because Sondheim is not as popular as some other things can be, especially not here in Mexico where I live. Stephen Sondheim is not that popular. Um, so being able to connect with someone from, you know, across the world and many people around the world and form links and relationships and friendships and just this kind of on indestructible bonds, um, that to me is priceless. And that's something that only art can do. So um, I'm going to recommend that if you, uh, if you enjoy Sondheim, you read these books that I've mentioned. Um, you can also watch the documentary Six by Sondheim, which is pretty basic. It's very accessible and really, really delightful. And um, you can really gather from this, uh, the, 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 the life and the career that this man has had. Now, before I go, I want to again say happy birthday, Mr. Sondheim. I know he's not watching this video, but, you know, this is mainly for me and to celebrate my love for his legacy and for what he has done for me um, and for many other peoples out there. I am not alone because no one is alone. Truly, no one is alone. So anyway, before I go, I am going to sing pretty much the hardest song ever, and it's from Company by Stephen Sondheim, Being Alive. Thanks for watching. Somebody hold me too close. Somebody hurt me too deep. Somebody sit in my chair and ruin my sleep and make me aware of being alive, being alive. Somebody need me too much, somebody know me too well, somebody pull me up short and put me through hell and give me support for being alive. Make me alive. Make me alive. Make me confused. Mock me with praise. Let me be used. Very my day. 
but alone is alone not alone somebody crowd me with love somebody force me to care somebody make me come through I'll always be there as frightened as you to help us survive being alive